Hit it, hit it. The president wants to spy on 200 million Americans without a warrant. Has he read this document which he was sworn to uphold? Now, I will not have you libel Abraham Lincoln. I don't understand the problem with registering guns. We register cars. Mark Levine brings you the news the government doesn't want you to know. Today, an explosive story about connections between white supremacists and Islamic terrorists. When there's a conflict between Scalia's conservative values and the Constitution of the United States, he throws away the Constitution. When we do have secret prisons, that is not what America's all about. Let's go to Mark in five, four, three, two. Good evening, America. Welcome to the Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. The Constitution says that the president shall from time to time give to the Congress information of the State of the Union and recommend to their consideration such measures as he shall judge necessary and expedient. There actually aren't that many things in the Constitution for the president do, to do. He's the commander in chief, of course. He appoints a bunch of people. Uh, he shall uh, take care that the laws be faithfully executed. But other than that, he's got to give that State of the Union. Now, it doesn't say once a year, but for, well, all, every president has given this a State of the Union speech or address or writing of the State of the Union once a year at the beginning of his term since the beginning. And for the last 100 years or so, it's being done before a joint Houses of Congress. The House and the Senate all stand together. Oh, yay, oh, yay. Uh, the President of the United States and President Obama will tomorrow say what measures he believes are necessary and expedient. No doubt he will use the phrase that, oh, I can remember in virtually every State of the Union in my lifetime, which is the State of the Union is strong. Is the State of the Union strong? How could it be made stronger? If the President is giving us these policies that he finds necessary and expedient, it's obviously not perfect. But after all, the Constitution is all about developing a more perfect union. So I want to start by talking how is the State of the Union and how it can be made better. And who better to do that with than my Republican counterpart, Mike Lane, the President of Intelligence Strategies. Mike, good to see you again. Good to be back, Mark. Thank you. Uh, so let's talk about the current State of the Union and how it can be made stronger. All right. Um, I, as a Democrat, I can tell you a number of things I hope to hear from President Obama tomorrow night. Uh, I'd like to hear him address raising the minimum wage. I'd like to make sure that he talks about making sure that people who've been long-term unemployed uh, get the funding they need to go out and look for jobs rather than worry about finding their next meal. I want to hear him talk about food stamps. I want to hear him talk about immigration and, and giving uh, people who uh, have lived in America virtually all of their lives but uh, weren't born here a chance to become citizens. There's a whole bunch of things I'd like to hear him talk about. As a Republican, though, you know, your party has been sort of the party of no, this entire presidency. This, you've been the party, not so much, I would argue, with ideas, but the party trying to stop President Obama's ideas. What ideas do you think, if any, could President Obama put forward that your party would be quick to accept? Well, Mark, first of all, I'm glad to see that he accepts this his constitutional responsibility to uh, move forward and deliver a State of the Union address. Uh, he doesn't seem to understand the rest of it where he's expected to faithfully execute the duties of the office and enforce the laws of the United States. Oh, well, so be it. He only has three years left, thank the Lord. Uh, what I would I'm like glad to you see, enjoyed your little rhetorical what I would like, right ahead. What, what I would like to see him do is pivot for the 3,900 and 21st time back to jobs, only this time I want him to really mean jobs. I want him to work with everyone in terms of growing the economy, creating the economic expansion we need to create jobs so everyone who wants a job can have it. You know, we've got 35 million people who are unemployed or underemployed uh, in this country. The U6 rate is o almost 12 percent. That's the rate of people who are, you know, just not employed at where they should be. Mark. We need someone who will finally focus on jobs. I'm hopeful that the president will do that, but I'm not hopeful that he will do that. I mean, as you know, Mike, the unemployment level is uh, certainly down from uh, the peak. Eleven point six percent is the U6 um, mark. It's awful. It's uh, it's 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 down to about seven percent, and that's there's, awful. There's, uh, it is. That's it absolutely. Is. We awful. definitely need more and better jobs for people. Uh, and one of the ways I think we need to have jobs that actually pay for people's 
living. I mean, if you, there's no reason to take a minimum wage job. A minimum wage job earning seven twenty-five an hour. You know, I was just talking with Sarah Ward, producer back there, about Henry Ford, who 100 years ago decided to pay his workers enough to make his Model Ts to afford his Model Ts. And we did some calculations. Sarah did most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we figured out that that wage, which was $5 a day 100 years ago, would be $13 an hour today. $13 an hour doesn't seem like much. It's maybe 26000 a year, barely getting you out of poverty, but it's almost twice the current minimum wage. And Mark, it as, seems as, to me as, that as you know, manufacturing is the thing that creates economic uh, growth. It creates wealth. Uh, it takes you know bits and pieces, puts them together, and creates something more valuable that people are willing to pay for. The average manufacturing job today, like Henry Ford, pays a lot more than $13 it an does, hour. It does. It's the jobs that don't create wealth that don't pay that much, Mark. Well, the jobs that don't create wealth. I mean, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but let me, let me finish the, the point about manufacturing. So productivity, may, maybe a, a, a good manufacturing job and get $20, $30 an hour, uh, uh, but uh, productivity has gone up way more than two or three times since Henry Ford. It's gone up hundreds and hundreds of times. And what we find is that as you go through about the 1970s, you find that when productivity increased, the corporations, they made a lot of money. The bosses made a lot of money. But the workers on the assembly lines, they made more money too. Everyone was Everyone should off. make money as you go forward. What you find in the last, well, really, it started in the Reagan era, uh, stopped a bit in the Clinton era, definitely in the Bush era, with these productivity games, workers work harder. And what that means is their bosses get richer, and they get virtually none of the increase in their hard work. They get virtually Mark, none of that wages back. You know, Shouldn't minimum wage at least track, before we even get to, to productivity, track inflation? I interestingly, you know, you talk about you know, in the Reagan era and in the Bush era and things like that, no segment of workers has not done worse than in the Obama era. It, no matter how you want to slice it, if you want to talk about teenage workers, they're much worse off in the Obama era. If you want to talk about women well, workers, you're probably including women, the Bush recession women, and the Obama women era. Women are much worse off in the Obama economy than they are any place else. If you want to talk about blacks and other minorities, they are much you know worse, worse off, off than they are th than they were in any other thing. Do you know why Let, they're worse off? Let's talk about the difference between uh, Reagan and and Obama. In, uh, in, in Reagan's first term, women's uh, economic position increased by 36%. In Reagan's first term, the unemployment rate percent. was 11%. And he so, Mark, uh, you Mark, know, Mark. you were complaining about 7% unemployment. Right. Shouldn't be citing Ronald Reagan's well, first that term was, that, that, you when, when unemployment hit 10.8%. But, but, but he got it down to 4%. He got the inflation that he inherited at 20% down to 4%. He got, you know, the misery index was never as bad as it was as when Ronald Reagan took presidency, except for right now, the misery right index is even worse than it was under Jimmy Carter. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, that's not true because inflation is, misery is unemployment well, plus inflation and inflation is at record lows. Well, so I, I'm sure the misery index uh, is, is not even 10%, frankly, much less the 20% or so that it was under, uh, under Carter and Reagan. Up. No, but here, here's, the, here's the question though. The reason why people are having such a hard time to today is because their wages haven't kept up with inflation or their productivity. No, no, so the, the reason they're, they're having a hard time is because they it, don't have jobs. It, they don't have your jobs. Your people are doing better, okay? The corporations are doing well, great. Not my the people. stock market hit record highs. It's gone down a little bit. Two weeks ago, it hit absolute records. There is more corporate cash just sitting there. Trillions of dollars sitting there, and CEOs, I'm sure, raid whatever they can out of it and take what they can, but mostly oh. it's being unspent. It's not being invested in the economy. If, first of all, if the they they ought to go to jail. Well, no, they can legally do it because all they do is they vote themselves better wages. They vote themselves, you know, hundred hundred million dollars okay. if it succeeds. Well, that's two hundred million that's dollars. Not ripping off if, the if it doesn't then. succeed, you know, well, that's not I think it is. Till, I know. think it is. It, just because it's legal doesn't right. mean it's, it's still it's still not wrong. Here's the problem. The reason why corporations aren't spending trillions of dollars is there's not enough demand for their products. No, and the reason that's there's not, not enough true. demand for their products is because the middle class is struggling, and the working class is struggling more, and poor people are struggling even more. And if we simply would have the same kind of wage structure we had in the 60s or the 50s, or, or really almost any time since the 1920s, almost, almost back to Henry Ford, then 
middle class people could afford to buy enough products, and then those corporations would say, oh, well, we, we better build another factory. We, we oh. better provide more services to Mark, people. Mark, I, I differ with you. I'm sure you're not surprised. I know. Look, the reason that the corporations are not investing that money is because of the uncertain environment. They have no idea what That's their costs silly. are going to do for any job they create. That's just o silly. Obamacare is in a death spiral now. It's about to die. We don't know what the, uh, the economic bailout of the insurance companies is going to be. I hope nothing. I hope they all go belly up if that's what, you know, for, for getting in bed like that. But in addition, in the international market, the, the European economy is down. Uh, the Argentinian economy is, is, you know, in a death spiral right now. The Chinese economy is falling apart. Mike, you know, Mark, we, no, in this uncertain environment, both in America and internationally, no one's going to invest that money. We need to create an environment that is conducive to economic investment, and the president opposes that. That's why we have no jobs, and that's why we have income inequality. You know, uh, to say that it's because of an uncertain environment, that's just silly. It is. It's totally in the uncertain in environment. The 1970s was certainly an uncertain environment. Uh, you know, we, the 1980s, uncertain, they're always in certain environments. There's no. always economic unrest the, all no, around no, the, the world. The, the, There's always questions of, uh, I mean, look in the 19, look at during Vietnam, the 60s and 70s. 60s were a roaring decade economically, right, when people are protesting in the streets and uh, protesting you know, for Vietnam the, the and Vietnam, civil rights The, the and Vietnam so forth. War did not have an impact on the economy. Let me tell well, you something. The thing that has an impact it's on not the economy is government regulation, taxes. Let me tell you something. Rich people, if they can make more money, will invest in America. Right. And right now, they make more right. money by investing in China, because, by investing in Mexico, because, by investing in Thailand. Well, because first of all, they're because not investing in China party, anymore because China's economy is going into your, the tank. But your party allows them to make more money by killing American jobs than by creating American jobs. If we have the kinds of incentives, which my party has supported. Remember, President Obama's had a jobs bill for five years that your party refuses to look at that actually Mark. encourages companies to have jobs here rather than make wages off off of the poorest Guatemalan worker or the poorest uh, worker in, in, in Thailand or Mexico, then we could have better American jobs. Mark, the, the House of Representatives has sent 57 separate job creation bills. Why don't they consider over, Obama's? O over to the Senate, and Harry Reid has not permitted a vote on a single one of those 57 President votes. Obama has had Look, a jobs bill here's, here's where every we can single agree. month, every single year for the last five years. Why doesn't Here, John Boehner take that one here, Here's where I think we can agree. Let's start with the Keystone Pipeline. Let's just build the damn Keystone Pipeline. Let's get 50,000 Americans to work building 50, 000, that thing. You mean uh, 500? No, no. Those are permanent jobs, Mark. I'm talking about the four or five year jobs building the pipeline. You're talking about That's the two the years where the Canadian company will have its Canadian workers. I mean, I'm glad to no, see no, that you're so happy, Canadian, happy, so happy to, to Canadian support Canadian workers. Canadian workers. No, no, they are not um, going to be Canadian From workers. what I've seen, it's a few hundred jobs. And those, what it, those what are it mainly the permanent does, jobs, Mark. No, no, those are the temporary jobs. Mark, you what, can't what build I, a pipeline transcontinental with a couple hundred people. I'll tell you what it would do, though. It would be a great way to raise oil prices because, you know, if they could ship their stuff to China overseas, they could charge more to Americans. So great way for a Chinese company and a, and a Canadian company to make money right. while Americans pay higher oil The American prices. people want great the idea. transcontinental oh, pipeline. And don't forget the it's oil spill. It's good for economic security, it's good for energy security, and it's good for national security. And don't forget you can have oil spills like you did in West Virginia. I want to get to West Virginia when we come back. Folks, if you want to join this discussion, please do. 571-749-1166. She's had more than a dozen fractures. And in the next few years, she faces two major surgeries to strengthen her fragile bones. She's only 10 years old. Most people don't worry about fragile bones until late in life. For those with osteogenesis imperfecta, brittle bones are a concern throughout their lifetime. Find out how you can strengthen this child's future. Diabetes is a killer. After I was diagnosed, I didn't feel sick, so I didn't listen to my doctor. Then it struck. I had a heart attack, then a stroke, and I was only 49. Most people with diabetes also have high blood pressure and cholesterol, which can cause severe heart damage. In fact, two out of three people with diabetes die from heart disease or stroke. Don't let diabetes destroy your life. Call for your free diabetes survival guide. Choose to live.
Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. I am discussing the State of the Union with Republican strategist Mike Lane. I am a Democrat. He is a Republican. We often disagree, but we certainly think we should talk with each other. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people in Congress don't do that enough, Mike. Let, look, it's easy to say your jobs plan, that's the right jobs plan. President Obama's jobs plan or Democrats' jobs plan, that's the right jobs plan. Be specific. What specifically would you like to see President Obama proposed tomorrow that actually would make a difference in your view? If he would endorse and go ahead full speed with the Keystone Pipeline, I think he'll find cooperation on a lot of issues that Republicans don't want to cooperate on. That's the single wow. most important thing he could do. That's so the minor. The second most important thing he can you, do is... You know what, the Keystone is, Pipeline would, wouldn't lower unemployment 0.1%. It wouldn't lower it 0.1%. It would raise gas prices. It would cause a huge environmental possible hazard over the Nebraska aquifers. The, the southern part, by the way, is already working, uh, the, you know, of the pipeline. And it would basically allow Canada to sell oil to China cheaper. I'm not sure why we want that. Because it's, number one, it's economic activity in our country. Number two, it's not in our it's country. Incre Mark, it, where do you think the pipeline the goes? Pipeline it is, goes right through the heartland it goes through of the United our States of America. Right, it's, it's like saying that a, a tunnel, it's, look, it's, it's taking Canadian oil and selling right. it to Chinese markets. It used to have to stop in Kansas City and we would get the cheap Canadian oil. Now they'll be able to sell on the market price. That will raise gas prices all across the country. No, it won't. I, that will harm no, economic it, activity. It, it actually States. won't. Give mark. me some of the Keystone Pipeline because right. that's a non-starter. No, the Keystone Pipeline is the single most important thing. The second most important thing he can do is a dramatic reduction in the corporate income tax. Let's take it right now from uh, 35 down to about 20 or 22 All right, let's uh, do this, Mike. Let's, let's uh, take it out maybe to 25%, but make sure every corporation pays taxes every single year because three quarters of corporations pay zero tax, which means the effective rate of the okay. corporate income tax is about 9%. You take 35% on the one quarter that are paying, you divide by four because three quarters don't pay, and you get about 9%. I, this is something that I think is doable between Democrats and Republicans. Lower rate, but everybody okay. pays. I'll even agree to an increase in taxes for you. How's that? If you increase say, in overall tax if, level. If you say the effective tax rate is 9%, Let's do tax reform. I'll give you 10%, and let's bring the corporate tax rate from 35 down to 10%, well, which we'll is an increase of 10% over what you just told me they're just paying, and everybody pays it. I'm all in. It, it, all in. And everybody pays it. All and, in. And we get rid of all the loopholes and all the ways the corporations avoid all taxes. In. And if they make it abroad, they have to pay for it, too. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by abroad. I mean, it, it abroad. I, mean, I mean, if a company makes a product abroad and then brings it and sells it to Americans because they make uh, the, the cheap phones in China or something like that, then they've got, they've got to pay taxes. When too. they repatriate that money, they no. absolutely will no. have to they pay No, they have it. to do it the moment Mark, they make it Mark, because otherwise there's an incentive the to country. stick it. No, they're not. They, they stick are it in Bermuda. Taxes in a foreign country. Well, the United States already has a proposal. If they pay in the foreign country, you can deduct it one for one. But you just said but, no. No. You just said we weren't going to do no, that. No, because if the tax in the foreign country are 1%, I want them to pay the remaining 9% to the United States. That's exactly right. Well, I want not. them to pay the full 10%. Because here's the thing, that makes them less likely to stick it in Bermuda or Cayman Islands or tax havens that market, and make you, sure you know, they pay cor for it. Corporations, so, corporations have a lot of money overseas, but they're not hiding it in the they, Caymans or Bermuda. Course, they got a lot of other places they're no, putting no, it. You know? they, they have ongoing operations throughout Europe. You they know? are holding Ford it in Ford Motor cash. Company Most is a huge them. European company. That's where they're holding it. They're not sticking it in hiding it in bank accounts. Uh, have, you, have you seen some of the stuff? I mean, I don't mean to pick on any particular company, uh, so, which I was about to name, but there are companies, they're doing all kinds of, look, if you make it and you sell it to Americans, you pay full American taxes. And you know what? If you have to pay additional foreign taxes, I'm fine with that too. I'll tell you why. Maybe you'll make it in America. Maybe if you have to pay American taxes and you have to make pay um, Guatemalan taxes, maybe you won't hire Guatemalan workers. Maybe you'll hire American workers. So I'm okay with that if you well, make sure you just, you that they- you just made our they, immigration they, problem a lot worse by taking the economic investment out of the places where we want to grow their own economies and you're letting them fall apart, you know what? putting more pressure on our, our immigration system. No, 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 yes. no, no they, they, can, they can pay American taxes Mark, if for essential, the products sold if a essential in America. American worker can't get a job in their own country, they're going to come here illegally. That's why they're here. I say let them come here legally. I think immigration has always been the lifeblood of America. I think people have always come here looking for a better life. And I think, frankly, the immigrants that come here work very hard 
do tend to do very well for, for themselves. The, for, for the most part, you're exactly right. Right. So, so I don't, I don't, I'm not scared of immigration. That doesn't I, frighten me. Nobody is scared of immigration. Mark. Okay. What I'm saying is if you don't want to be overwhelmed, if you don't want the system overwhelmed the way it currently Here's is, the deal. that you need to have them have some sort of economic progress and promise in their own country so that they won't illegally come here. If the American that's my point. companies want to go to Guatemala to sell products in Guatemala, that's one thing. What I don't want them doing is undercutting American labor, Mark, going to Guatemala, Mark, taking basically hiring people at a dollar a day, well below our minimum wage, and then using that. If Mark, they're going to do that, you, you know what? They should pay American taxes. You don't sell products to Guatemalans or El Salvadorans or anybody else who have absolutely no jobs because there's no investment in their country because all their workers are illegally coming to the United States. It's not all You've got workers. a vicious that's, circle that, going there, and, you, and you, that, you know, that, that's all the workers. You're, you're in the Obama death I, spiral no, here. What I'm saying is there's been a race to the bottom, and the race to the bottom is because corporations are not spending their taxes on America, and they're, and they're not spending their, their corporate profits on Americans. And the reason they're not is Americans don't have enough money to spend because our wages are going down because they're getting cheap labor abroad. All right. And what I'd like to see... I, to I told you I'd go for 10% on the domestic stuff. You told me you'd no go for 20 to 22%. No, no, no loopholes. Oh, I was assuming that the loopholes were still there. No, well, then there's no point. Uh, no. If you're going to keep the loopholes, you Mark, might as well raise up to 50% Mark, and make sure they pay their taxes. If they're already paying an effective rate of 9%, you can't raise the effective rate to 22%. That doesn't work. That is it going to make it less attractive no, to invest but here. But the problem is that if, if they're basically, you're still rewarding them for taking jobs abroad, we're never going to get the 10% effective rate. We're just not going to get we're it. We're on apples and oranges. You just don't get what I'm saying. Sure, I, I you're, mean, say, you're saying basically the companies get 10% in America and then I'm they go saying, abroad, they get 0%. I'm, no, Great. I'm, and then I'm I saying the second, sure that, that second they, most important You would thing. agree that there's more, you would agree to a, an effective tax rate so that more corporate money comes in. And if more corporate money doesn't come in year one, we raise the rates 2%. If it doesn't come in, we raise it another 2% and we keep raising it until we actually until get the back, money back. Until we're back to 50% we and we go have to 60%. no investment in this country. Because you told me that you're okay with bringing more corporate tax revenue in. I said. So we'll, go to, we'll do Mark, a CBO study and we'll find I, out. What I said was, seriously, what I said was, we, we can agree on this, I think, was that if we just take where we are now, we need to take our 35% tax rate, which is the highest in the world, and we need, to reduce, it, we need to reduce it to about 20 to 22%. President Obama just, supports just, just that. Just to be competitive. President now, Obama if supports you wanna, if, lowering if you the tax rates that, and getting rid of the loopholes. If you want to, all right, then if you want to get rid of the loopholes, it's got to go down to about 9 or 10%, because that's well, where it is now. No, you got to get rid of the loopholes to get it down you to 25%. Told, no, Mark, no. Well, no, because you're not including the foreign loophole. That's Mark, the biggest loophole of all. You know, what you want to do is you want to take an effective 9% tax rate and raise it to an effective 25% tax no. rate. You will never have any investment what, in this country at I'm, all under that circumstance. What I'm saying is that under the current system, it is way too lucrative for corporations to basically avoid American taxes by using tricks and trades to have offshore companies or, or even offshore factories. And that's not good for America, it's not good for American workers, and it doesn't raise the tax money you want. All right, the third most important thing he can do is show some flexibility on Obamacare, all right? What we need to do is um, I believe that we, was settled we, we, a few we need years back. we need to get rid of the one size fits all plan that Obama has, where everybody you know can only get something that he has approved, uh, and we need to go back to the market where you can buy oh, the medical insurance that fits you instead right, of a government structure. Right, the market. Structure. Right, wait. that's what we you need. You go and you get that's cancer, the, and if you're rich, you get healed. If you're poor, you die. The market. No. The market where a tiny no. Tim doesn't get to walk, but Ebenezer Scrooge gets the best health care ever. No. The market where people with pre-existing conditions are denied. No. Where young people don't have health care. No. The market. Mark, did you hear what I said? In my proposal, I didn't address those things. I was addressing... You said the market. Well, the market doesn't address those Excuse things. Excuse me. There are certain things that I'm stipulating you can keep in return for the president being flexible on the plans. You can keep the 26-year-olds on their father's plans. Okay. You can keep the no, the, the no pre-existing conditions. You can okay. keep the no lifetime caps. Okay. You can keep all those things that you keep talking about. Okay. I'm ceding them to you. And, and subsidies for people who need it. To I'm pay ceding for them to you in return for flexibility on the design of policies so people don't have to go through the exchanges. They can go out and buy their own right policy now. on the open. No, 
I cannot. I am. I am prevented by no, law. You're not. Not by law. Yes, you're prevented I am. maybe because your insurance no, company. I'm, I'm prevented doesn't... by law from going out. I have to go. Oh, you're talking the about exchange. you want to buy a catastrophic plan. Yes. You want to make sure that people can buy health care that basically is inadequate. I want. I want to. I want to buy. You don't want minimum standards in healthcare. I. I, I want to buy health care that doesn't provide me personally with lactation services. I want to buy health care that doesn't provide me with birth control. I want to buy things that don't provide me with maternity care right all of these things that President Obama mandates that I purchase for me I don't want that I want to go out into the marketplace and I want okay, to so buy you also a plan think, that I want how about uh, now you don't have to fund education uh, because you don't have any kids or uh, Mark, I'm talking have, about you don't me. Have to fund Medicare I'm because about there, me. there are, there are I don't, you're an elderly I, I don't, don't have to fight I don't want maternity care mark I don't want it you except know what? you know what you know what? I, I guess it's a good thing. I, I guess it's a good thing I have all those things because I might need them because I also have gender reassignment coverage. So when I get my gender reassigned, my, I can have you know. I mean, it's just here's the dirty. Why is the president forcing this down my throat? Because here's the dirty secret about government. We're all in this together. Right. Uh, I pay for education even though I don't have kids in the school. I pay for right. Medicare uh, even though uh, I, I'm not right. elderly enough to get it. Uh, I pay for firefighters even though I've never had a fire in my house. Right. Uh, I pay for military to support a war in Iraq that. I I never voted for. Uh, the government well, you, does. You, you, all, citizens uh, don't supported. get to vote for wars, Mark. So well, that's, and that's citizens a red herring. also don't get to vote to decide what's covered. If you believe that education is a good thing, as I do, if you believe that women's health care is a good thing. Women's health care is a very good thing. I don't need women's health care. I want a policy that doesn't provide me personally with women's health care. Okay. So why, is you, that too much why, to ask? why are you paying for education then? You don't need. You don't need public school education anymore. Why are you paying for it? I'm not paying because you for recognize me. it's. A I'm not paying for me. I'm paying for children. That's right. And when you're paying for lactation services, you're paying for the women. No, I'm paying it. for me, Mark. It's no. part of my policy. I don't want it. It's, you're no, pay, it's you're, part of my policy, when you're Mark. Paying for I it, don't want it. You're paying for whip. Look, the idea I don't need it. that women should solely bear the cost of reproduction, that they should solely bear the cost of children, that doesn't make any you're, sense at all. You're, you're, Men have as much to do not, with that's having not children at all as what women we're talking have to. About. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about me, Mark. I have certain Your things. insurance I want, company knows I want the that you're old, not a woman. I want the old bare bones catastrophic policy that I've had for 20 years to women suited me very well, and that was about maybe a third as expensive as what I'm facing. Here's the thing. The vast majority of people under the Affordable Care Act are doing much better. Not everyone. No, no, it's no, true. no. The vast no. majority are people like the guy holding up the sign behind no, no. me okay. who told me that his, his health care costs went down from $200 a month to $40 and a And God month. bless him. I'm willing to do that. I don't want to pay for here's the thing. maternity services. So here's the answer. We simply have universal care for everyone, and then we all pay less, and well, we get more. I know Just like 35 nations on Earth, all of them live longer than we do, and they pay less than half of what we do. That's what Canada does. That's what Europe does. That's the obvious solution. Mark, we have the best health care system in the world up until about a month ago. We are headed for Only if one you're of rich, the worst right? health care systems Only if in the you're world. Rich. Most Americans... You know, you it's, a, it's a loser for your party. Go ahead and defend the best health care in the system party. in the world does not allow we're going to take over millions the Senate of Americans issue. to go bankrupt because they can't afford adequate health care. Doesn't happen in any other nation on earth, and it shouldn't happen in America. So I'll give you a chance to call in here. if you want right after this. Art, a universal language, an expression I don't of think culture. So, no, you got off of self. And now, thanks to Empowered Women International, a way for emerging and established immigrant and refugee artists and artisans to find hope to earn a living while enriching the lives of all of us. Empowered Women International, making a better America every day. For more information on Empowered Women International's educational programs, or to make a tax-free donation, contact cfrip at aol.com. tell which kids have trouble with their eyesight. But that's not always the case. 
Even though one in four children may have a vision problem, eye doctors tell us the symptoms aren't always so obvious. We do know that 80% of all childhood learning is visual. And without good vision, kids can have trouble learning to read. And may fall behind in school. For clues on how to spot the real life signs of childhood vision problems, and what parents can do, visit checkyearly.com. A public service message from the Vision Council of America and reading is fundamental. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Inside Scoop, I'm your host, Mark Levine. And yes, I continued the discussion or disagreement with my guest, uh, Mike Lane, during the break because we can't get enough of these kinds of things. Uh, and yes, it is cheaper and better in Canada. I Mark, look up the statistics. Mark, they pay less than we do. They live longer than we do. It's cheaper and better. I have a niece who is a practicing physician in Canada. Okay. All right. It's not better. It is better. It is better. I, I admit that people better. are paid more in the I United States. Hospitals make hundreds of thousands of dollars per bed, things I like have, that that they don't do in Canada. I have the inside scoop. Yeah. <laughs> it is not better in Let Canada. me ask you about the one thing, because uh, everything you said is a non-starter, but let me tell you about the one thing that I actually think could be done in this Congress, and that's immigration reform. Uh, this is something that uh, Democrats have long supported, things like the DREAM Act, allowing kids that came here when they were six or seven or eight did not come through any choice of their own, lived their whole lives here. Many times English is the only language they speak. They don't even know their home countries. Having, giving them a chance to, to become a citizen. That's something that not only Democrats have long supported, but many in your party are starting to recognize that if you don't support something like that, you're gonna lose a lot of votes in 2014. Can we get at least immigration reform done? Doubtful, but I'll tell you the calculus on that. First of all, is that the most likely of anything? Be, be, because you're dead wrong about 2014. There's no downside risk to nothing happening in 2014. The, uh, the coalition turnout in 2014 is not going to mirror 2012. Maybe you should get out and vote so, in 2014 and show him he's wrong. So, uh, so, we're, so there's no pressure for 2014. There is a there is a pressure for 2016. I'll grant you that, and you stated it correctly. But it's it's three years down the road. It's not one year down the road. Well, maybe we now, just have to get some of those voters that um, come out in 2008 and 2012 to. Come come out in 2014. It's not going to happen, Mark. Um, Obama's not on the ballot. Uh, so so wh where are we? Uh, we, do have, uh, we, we do have some movement. It doesn't uh, matter if Obama's on the ballot. Uh, yeah, yes, it does. Look at 2010. Latinos are... are, are look, at, look, at, look at 2010 and what was the, what was the turnout in 2010, and that I tells think, you what happens when I Obama's not Latino on the ballot. I think the Latino-American community is getting more sophisticated and is more likely to come out in all years. You know what? And, uh, and in higher numbers, and I, 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 and I think immigration reform will be I, the issue they'll come I, out I, I agree with you, but things don't, things don't improve 17,000% in one cycle. Things improve incrementally in each cycle, but nothing improves 17,000% in one does cycle. Does anyone in your so party you just, want to do immigration because it's the right thing to do rather than for political yes, reasons? Yes, yes, we want to do immigration, but here, here's, there's two problems. Number one, uh, the president has not signaled any flexibility on this at all, and, and you know we're just not going to have... What flexibility are you looking for? There's already a Senate bill that's passed. It's quite the, onerous. It requires the, the a 13-year path to no, citizenship. No, 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 it's no. not exactly easy. There's penalties all along the way. It's, it's, I think it's, it's a compromise. It has, it's a strong bipartisan it's, bill. It, it's, Why can't they just let that one... It, I'll it, bet you if the Senate bill went to the House, it would pass tomorrow. It has enough votes, look, Democrats and Republicans. Look, the uh, Senate bill is not a compromise. Uh, the Senate bill is... It's a Partisan bill. It's, it's it, you have you know the usual cast of characters oh, on it's that 65, one. Oh, you know. 70 votes. It was it was a Mark, significant it, it, number. It was, it was, it was way over 60. It was an easy vote to throw because you knew that uh, the House was not going to uh, even consider. Why it. not? What's wrong with the Senate? Why, why hasn't Harry Reid considered a single one of the 57 That's jobs bills that the House has sent over? Why to hasn't him? the House considered Obama's well, bills? Look, you can give all the partisan look, stuff. What specifically about, is wrong with the Senate bill right, let, as a matter of policy? There's not going to be a special pathway to citizenship, okay? It's just not going to happen. People who entered the country illegally uh, are not going to uh, get a special pathway. So uh, even if your parents them, brought you when you were no, two. No, 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 hang on. All you're, right. it's, you're not going to be able to bypass the system and enter into your special thing, no matter what your, your waiting list is, you're going to have to go through the regular process. Now, uh, when you want to talk about the kids, that, that's a different story. Oh, okay. okay. So you would that, consider that's a, a different Act, story. I think. I, I think I think there's uh, maybe they pass the dream there's a no. I'm talking about a pathway to citizenship here. Uh, there is a uh, an argument to be made 
uh, for a pathway to citizenship for the kids uh, that, as you say, uh, were brought in. Now, don't, don't tell me none of them you know, speak anything but English, because I know for a fact that if Spanish depends, is spoken in their depends home... Depends on the kids. They, they, depends no. on the kids. If Spanish and, is spoken and, and in the home, came. Mark, they, they learn Spanish. Depends on the kids or, and when they came, and they're, and they're not all Spanish or, language or, or Chinese, or, or Japanese, or Hungarian, or Romanian, whatever it is. And I don't you know. think it's bad for Americans to speak another language. Um, but the the other it's thing, thing. The, the other thing is that Republicans, for for good reason, I think, Republicans do not trust Obama on border security. <laughs> they think that this is another one. President Obama has had more deportations in the last five years than, than President security, Bush in that's, all that's, of that's, eight that's, years. That's, and, and I know you want it. piranhas and, and a fence. No, no, no. Barbed wire fence. No, no, no. He has just ordered stopping the deportations. He's, he's just, done more. He's just ordered, Mark, what did the, he do last year? He's done he more. He issued an executive order stopping Mike, the deportations. He has deported more in five years than right. Bush has in, and, in, in eight. And, and he, he stopped has done it. almost double. And he issued an he executive order stopping He doesn't have to do another it. deportation and already have done more than George Bush. And he won't do any more. And you know that there's far more, fewer people coming across the border because the Bush recession caused a lot fewer to go in. So he's deporting more out while fewer are coming in, which means he's more than twice effective as George Bush. And still, Mark, still your party won't accept him on border no, security. No, Mark, that, that's really Mark, over the top. let's face it. The, the president is not interested in border security. The president cannot be trusted on border security. The president he's has twice issued, as effective as George Bush and he the, can't be effective the, 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 on, on border first security. First of all, deportations are not border security. Okay. Secondly, uh, let's talk about the executive order that he issued stopping the deportations. They're not happening anymore, That's Mark. He issued, a he issued, he an issued executive a executive order. Executive order saying that he was going to focus his deportation on criminals and focus them not on the children that came here when they were two, five, or six. That makes sense. Remember, he's already been twice effective as George Bush. Right. So and now, and now he's not being now, effective at all. And, and so, all right. no, no, no. Well, this he's issued, stopped all deportations. He's issued, he's he has issued, not stopped all deportations. He stopped deporting the kids that came here when they were two, five, or six, or ten. He's issued five or six illegal executive orders on Obamacare. He's issued uh, illegal he's executive on. orders on EPA. Let's Mark, talk about the president the EPA. cannot be trusted. That's the Republicans do not trust him. And unless the Republicans unless, unless he comes to them, unless he takes the initiative and he shows them that they can establish trust on That's this issue, crazy. an area where Mike. we might find agreement is not going to happen because the president cannot be trusted. One week president into office, the Republicans said they wouldn't work with him. One month into office, Mitch McConnell said, uh, they asked, what was his primary goals? Was it tax reform? Mm -hmm. Was it jobs? He said, nope, my goal is to get Obama out of office. Uh, you know, Mark, everyone from Rush Mark, Limbaugh saying he wanted Mark, him to fail. If you ask, the Republicans if you ask, said from day one, please. no, 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 no. You're like, we can't trust him after you said you couldn't trust him on day one. And you've actually you've if you, less trust since that time. They filibustered more than any than any Congress in history put together, the Republicans have filibustered more. So please, Mark, your party okay. said from the outset, we will not let you succeed. We want the economy to fail because we want you to fail. Okay. That has been your party's agenda. Both, so now to say you can't trust both, Obama, please don't pretend that's anything new. Both That's your party's goal. Both PolitiFact and the Washington Post named President Obama the liar of the year in 2013. So let's not, you know... Uh, you haven't you denied know. the fact that the Republican Party from day one decided and we will not cooperate with Obama, even if it's something that helps America, because that would make America succeed and then Obama would seem to succeed. Your party is actually trying to make the economy fail. That's one of the reasons, for example, why your party supports austerity so In much. Addition, Remember, your party loved big spending under Bush, loved big spending under Reagan, loved big spending under Bush Sr., and we were the party of fiscal conservatism. You and I argued that. That. We were the party of pay as you go. We were the party that said, don't spend all this money on corporate welfare. Don't spend all this money on hedge fund owners and, 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 uh, okay, so and we things can, like that. So we so, can so agree now, that now, was a crime? So now your party... Can we agree Solyndra was a crime? We, Too much corporate now your, welfare? Now your party uh, is basically saying, whenever a Democrat's in office, we suddenly believe in fiscal conservatism. So, so please don't tell me that your parties. Why can't we work together we can. in Congress to find ways that the two parties can come together? For example, the most recent budget deal. I didn't like it. A lot of, on your side didn't like it. But they recognized it was better than shutting the government down. In Immigration addition, is one of those things I think we can work on. Well. In addition to two separate independent left-wing organizations, PolitiFact and the Washington Post, naming the president the liar Washington of the Post year, the in addition to that, we, we need, oh, please, 
We, you know, if the president, if they were left wing organization, they wouldn't name the president the liar of the year. Now, would they? Come on. If the president shows. You ever heard Fox News call uh, George Bush if, uh, Jr. The, the, if the, the liar of the year? If the president. And that's a conservative organization. If the, the, our organizations if, are fair. Go ahead. If the president will show some flexibility, signal that he's willing to work on this instead of my way or the highway, we might get something done. And that's what the president needs to do tomorrow night. I think if he's going, I think to get Republicans anything. need to if stop fighting the signal, battles of the past. If if the okay. president does not signal flexibility, then you're not going to get anything this year. I think Republicans need to stop fighting the battles of the past. All right, the the, the battles over the Affordable Care Act are over. No, they're not. They can be fixed. No, it can, it can no, be. They're it can not be Mark. a little bit at the end. No, but I'll tell you something. It Americans be, all across it, the it country are finding rewritten. that they're getting cheaper health care, better health care, and at a cheaper cost, and they're happy about Mark, it. And no one is. Getting 20, cheaper, better health care. By the time 2017 comes Everybody is paying more around. for less coverage. Everybody is paying no, more no, for maybe less 1%, coverage. Maybe 1%. Yeah, by 1% 20, are getting a good deal. 99% are getting screwed. Obama's Mike, screwing his own 99%. That's just crazy just, uh, talk. Mark, 75% Mark, are, are getting the same insurance Obama they, ever, they always have. Obamacare is a disaster. Face it. Why are you the only Democrat in the world that argues that it's a success? You know what? Every other Democrat is running away from this downward death spiral, and you're defending have it. You see, have you seen the CBO numbers, congressional budget numbers? They suck. We're, we're, yes. We're, they they suck. don't suck. No. We're saving money. We're saving money on the deficit. We're not saving have you money. Seen, have you seen that health care costs have had the lowest increase in the last 40 years? Mark, my, Thank you, President my Obama. My costs were going to go down. Seen that? I was promised my costs are going down 2500 a year. My costs are going up $6,000 a year for bullshit. Bull coverage, and you know, and Mike, I'm in the same boat everybody else is. Here's the Mark, thing. Mark, it's awful. I know your party loves the free market and believes that the government should never, ever, ever intervene to give people a chance to get, oh, I don't know, healthy if they need to. I get that. No regulation. Regulations are bad. And I have to say, I no, think, no, not all regulations are bad. Okay. Most, most what, Obama what, regulations are bad, but what, not all regulations what, are bad. What about the, the fact that West Virginia didn't happen to regulate its chemical tanks, right? Uh, West Virginia was a, a conservative dream, right? They said, you got chemicals over the only river left, the Elk River, the only clean river in West Virginia, because we poured arsenic and selenium and uh, the Koch brothers, basically, uh, and, and energy industries and so forth have, Mark, have, have I, destroyed, know, for, for, destroyed for, the rivers. First of all, the Koch brothers had nothing oil. to do with they that. They do oil. They, Absolutely it was, nothing it was, it was the to coal do with companies. that. That's slander. But they all, they all believe that they all believe in lack of regulation as much as possible. And West Virginia did not regulate. They last checked their, their, their fuel tanks 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, lo and behold, the entire capital of West Virginia didn't have fresh drinking water. Uh, and now that's a Republican dream. That's a free no, market. You go ahead. Not. You don't get, because regulations absolutely are not. bad. The EPA is no, bad. All right. No, absolutely not. So no, are look, you okay with having look, strong clean water standards and the EPA measuring and making sure you can't stick harmful chemicals in look, the Look, I don't care whether there were regulations by the state of West Virginia there or not. The fact is they don't have the right to pour that stuff into the river by accident or on purpose. It was an accident. Sure they do. You know what that and right's called? No, no, they don't. It's no, called limited don't. liability. No, no, they don't. You pour it in, no. you make money. If they no. notice it, you declare bankruptcy. And, That's and the so, corporate system and you so, support and so And so much. here's what we do, okay? We investigate how this happened. If it was gross negligence, then they get criminally prosecuted, okay? That's what we do about that. Nobody's letting them off. Nobody's saying that they should be able to how do this. How about piercing no the saying, corporate veil if, if they're, and going if after every one of those executives until they're gross, dirt poor and homeless? If there's gross, how about that? If there's gross negligence, they get prosecuted and they go to jail. How about making sure no, they, they lose all the money they made they, from poisoning they, the river? They shouldn't we got, be, we got, we got shouldn't be homeless. They should we'll be, be in jail. After this. They should be in jail, not I'm homeless. Fine. If they're fine. grossly negligent. It might be easy for some folks, <laughs> but for others, it might take a little more work. And for those who haven't started, there are still things you can do to catch up. Oh, that is good news. Like getting out from underneath past debt. And don't get wrapped up with high-interest credit cards. Get you some eyes. Be diversified with your investments. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Your financial goals are not out of reach. The choice is clear. For a happy ending, choose to save. Everyone with alcohol and drug addiction is in the same boat. With treatment, you can find solid ground. For drug and alcohol information and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP.
Dude, are you sure you want this tattoo? Because, just do it! Some mistakes in life are permanent. Like hearing loss. To learn how to protect your hearing, visit ASHA.org. You've probably heard about heart disease, but did you know that it's the number one killer of women nationwide? Heart disease claims more lives each year than breast cancer, lung cancer, or strokes combined. But there are steps you can take to protect yourself against it. For more information on how you can prevent heart disease, contact your local American Heart Association or visit their website at www.americanheart.org. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. This is Mark Levine. We looked it up. It turns out it was Fox that called President no. Obama the liar of the year. No, uh, it was Washington Post said he had one of the misleading claims, and uh, PolitiFact called it uh, lie of the year, but didn't call the president lie of the li year. Liar, liar if you like your uh, doctor, you can keep it instead of liar you know, of the year. Uh, Difference with I would argue the liar of the millennium was George Bush when he said that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Uh, so uh, no, we, the we just call him the liar of the millennium. And if you want, if Obama can get lie of the year, that's fine. Let me let me go back to West Virginia though, because. This is a problem I've always argued with the corporate form. It's limited liability, and basically it works very easily. You go, you do some very, very risky behavior to make a lot of money. You give all that money to all the corporate execs and people like that, uh, and you don't, you don't check your tanks. You don't, you don't make sure they're not leaching poison into the water. And when they do, you declare bankruptcy, and the execs get to walk away with all the money. Here it's, here it's very simple. I would make sure that every penny that those executives made while this place was poisoning the people of West Virginia, every penny gets paid back. I would pierce the corporate veil because there's certain, when you are poisoning an entire city, you know what? That is, that is by definition gross negligence. That's by definition. We have strict liability, for example, I know no. you know that, for nuclear plants. Mark, you conduct a nuclear plant, Mark, it has an explosion, it kills 10,000 people, you are strictly liable even if you can't show the person that, that didn't uh, check the, Mark, the, the, you're, the tanks. You're right? a lawyer, you know better than what gross negligence is. Gross negligence is not the outcome, gross negligence is the action that causes the outcome, be it severe or be it not severe. It doesn't have to be gross negligence. You're, you're beating a dead horse. It doesn't have to be ordinary we negligence. Agree. They're going to jail if it's gross negligence. No. You're beating a dead horse. That's not to be gross negligence. I don't care if it's ordinary negligence. If you negligently not, poison and kill somebody, okay, are you still liable? You are. Even if you're not grossly negligent, what was, you still are. Uh, I say that if you have a chemical plant, strict liability, same thing we have for, for nuclear plants. If you poison the place, you pay for it, even if we have to pierce the corporate veil. Well, I don't think that's and the current law, Mark. You're not it's, gonna, it's not the current you know, law. So you can't do that. But it should so, be, and that's the difference. Oh, I'm not arguing that. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm arguing what you can do now. You said, what can we do now no, about no, no, this? No. And I'm telling you what we can all do right, now. Right, but you agree. If you want to talk about utopia in the future, okay, we can talk about utopia in the future. You'll agree with strict, right now, strict liability that basically if you poison a river so that 300,000 people can't drink their water or, or use the shower or brush their teeth or no. anything, which is what happened in West Virginia, uh, you have to compensate every single person there for damages and, you, and you're not going to let bankruptcy get you out of it uh, because there are a lot of people made a lot of money from that company. Long right. before I declared bankrupt. All right. If we you know, agree, I, I mean, you know, I, I don't think I don't, I don't think the damages are very high, but uh, you know, we'll. Um, well, uh, a lot of people have simply left. Had, they had to leave, and they had to leave for weeks on end. They're still no, telling no, they pregnant had to, women. Mark, it was a four-day crisis. It no, was not. It was they're a four-day crisis. They're still telling pregnant women not to drink the water. Okay. Well, you know what? They ought to pay for every bo every bottle of bottled water that goes there. They ought to pay and give them an extra ten cents on top of it too. Absolutely, I'm good with that. It's Compensation. A lot, it's a lot more than bottled water, but uh, you, you get the point. There's also hospital bills, things like that. Okay, so they're paying um, for that as well. He, okay. I agree. Okay. I'm glad to hear it. Let's talk about uh, the former governor of Virginia. Bob McDonnell uh, okay. and his wife. Uh, they have been indicted. Uh, the more and more I read about it, the more and more I think the indictment is, is a good idea. Uh, I think taking all these loans and gifts and so forth is unconscionable. And here's the, here's the reason I like it. Either he'll be convicted, and I'm fine with that, or if he is found not guilty because the law allowed it, then that will draw attention to laws that absolutely should prevent this kind of bribery. And we need to change the laws and make sure that if this is legal, 
that it's never legal again. All right, first of all, you're being reckless by using the term bribery. There is no evidence that's been released yet. We'll find out what happens in court, but there's no evidence that's been released yet that there's any bribery going on any place, okay? My, well, should we so talk about it? So you're being reckless. Wait, 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 um, wait. The second thing is, did, did, did he promote the guy's business? He did. Did he promote the drugs? Did, he did. Did, 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 he did, 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 did. did his wife do it? Yes. We even have emails that, that the process. No, he's, he's innocent until proven Mark. guilty. I Mark. respect that. But Mark. at the same time, I've seen those emails where basically uh, Ms. McDonald is asking him for all these favors and all these very expensive things. And is there anything things. illegal about that? You know what? There should be. Yes, there should be. But there's not. So the indictment is purely political. It's a very, very weak indictment uh, when you Why look at Why was it. this business owner buying Oscar de la Renta dresses for the governor's wife? Was it because he thought she was a pretty woman who deserved a nice dress? You, you know the what, same Mark? is true for the Rolex watches? You the same what, is true Mark? for the daughter's weddings? Do you, and, and, got, and why was he pushing so hard to promote his business through the governor? I've got, and you think there's nothing connected there? I mean, if so, because there's, there's a no, bridge I'm in saying, George Washington I'm, no, I'm going saying, to, off to New Jersey that I'd like to block for you. I'm saying there's no evidence there was any connection there. In order for there to be criminal activity, you don't need unethical sleazy behavior I'm stipulating to that okay you, 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 but that's that's not a criminal conviction for a criminal conviction you need to be able to demonstrate and prove a quid pro quo that's right there is none that we've seen so far yeah, it's not been proven now, yet because they haven't gone may, to trial no yet. no but there's nothing that's been released that even hints at a quid pro quo yet sure there now, is now we will well, find I, out um, when we go to trial whether or not there's anything. But right now, it, it looks like a sleazy political indictment. Look, why you, you, did you, why you, did the you, Virginia businessman you, why you why did he give all those gifts to to the governor's wife? Why why you, give me give me an honest reason? You, he gave all those gifts to the governor's wife. Oh, well, he was obviously trying to curry favor with the governor's wife. Why? Because he liked her? Because she was pretty? It doesn't matter what it his does intent matter. matter. Of it course matters it does. whether he received a quid pro quo. And he did because the governor and his wife both promoted his business. So he got First his quo, all, Mark, he Mark, got his quid, Mark, now you're Mark, arguing about the pro. Mark, Mark, <laughs> Mark. I mean, I mean Mark, he, he got benefits Mark, from this governor there and his is wife. No, uh, for, he can get all the benefits from the governor's wife that he wants. There's nothing right. criminal in so that. So you're arguing there's she quid is, and there's a quid. She is not a public official, okay? So therefore, you know, he, he and Mrs. McDonald uh, can do anything they want and there is no crime absolutely no crime at all because she's not an elected public official therefore there is no crime mike so now you know you're talking about uh mike, now you're really splitting hairs no i'm not splitting hairs mark i'm telling you what the law there, is there's all these benefits there's all mark, this money i'm okay, telling let, you what the law is let's talk about you're, the law. you're a lawyer right you know these things right so, let's, so what's the quid the quid is all the hundreds of thousands of dollars in loans and gifts and, and expensive things that's undisputed not what, hundreds of thousands more than a hundred thousand, hundred forty thousand, right. and that was cash alone. And then there's tens of thousands no, I, in, in in Rolex watches and and wedding gifts. And I, I the, it, ma okay. ma magic number comes in closer to one hundred and fifty than two hundred. I think it comes in closer to two hundred than one fifty. But we're not going to argue right. over that. So so the, the quid is there. What's the quo? It is beyond dispute that the governor and his wife actively promoted this guy's product. Okay. What you're basically saying is that this businessman who gave all these loans and benefits and was continually poor, uh, begged, and, and so much so that it annoyed him, according to the, the documents that the, the feds have already released, uh, to get more and more money. He gave all this income. He got all this benefit in return. We know the governor's wife wanted that income. We know the businesses want a return. You've conceded. You can't think of a reason why the businessman is paying for all these things, except no, to get something that. in return. I said, I said he was currying favor with the governor's wife. I why? said that. Why? If, for monetary it, profit. It, Mark, it, why? Why? It doesn't matter why. It does matter why. There Intent is, is all about this. What's what bribery absolutely is? Absolutely no crime that could be committed between Johnny Williams and the governor's wife. There is no crime there. It can't be. It's not in the law. If Johnny Williams is giving money to the governor's wife. Uh, because the governor needs money and is complaining to his wife, and the governor knows about it and curries and gives him benefits because of it, I think that's quid yes. pro quo. If he gives benefits because of it, there's no information or evidence that there were well, any know, benefits given I'm because sure of it. I'm sure the congressman in that you know, scam will tell you, of course we supported helping uh, you get good immigration things. We're Mark, always about helping people get immigration. And, I, and of course we like the 80000 in cash, but there's no connection between them. Mark, we would have given you these wonderful benefits without the cash we would have taken the cash without the wonderful benefits and if a jury believes that you're right he's acquitted mark i don't think you, a jury's gonna you, believe you, that you know what in ab scam we had all these guys
guys on tape. The quid pro quo was recorded. It was played in court. It was obvious. This is not I don't anything believe, even related to I think it's going to be scam. hard to argue to a jury that Johnny Williams was giving money to the governor uh, for, for... He didn't give the governor any money at all. He gave him a Rolex watch. Okay. He that, gave him 140000 that was later called a no, loan, but there's no papers it was, for it. It was a loan, Mark. There, why was there any paperwork? It, it, it was a loan. Uh, it was, 140 it was grand no and no paperwork? No, no. That's it, a nice loan. Look, here's, here's... I mean, they're not exactly family. Here's, here's what you read into this, okay? There are 28 indictments that the feds decided to lay down on this. Mm -hmm. They went to the governor and they said, guess what? We'll dismiss all 14 counts against your wife. That's right. Let her walk scot-free. And right. we'll dismiss 13 counts against you mm -hmm. if you plead guilty to this unrelated count over here and, and do one out of, out of uh, 28. Okay. You know what that is? That's the prosecution saying, oh man, do we have a weak hand? That, Let's see if we can trick that, this that's guy a plea, into that's, that's a plea bargain. This. And you know what? You I, never I'm get talking that about, good a plea bargain. I'm talking about that. You never here's, get here's that here's good thing, a plea. Mike. That's the prosecution if, saying, we don't have a case. If that's what, what this did. governor did is legal under current law, and it may well be, if it is, to me, that's we don't know yet because we haven't seen the evidence. Well, I only know what we've seen in the newspapers, and, and we know but, that there's there's no proof of, but, of of criminal activity in the newspapers. If this governor is not convicted, then that is an indictment not of the McDonald's but of current law. And I hope you and I can agree that this kind of thing should never be legal. And if it's shown to be legal because of the loopholes in Virginia law, the law needs to be changed. On that, we can agree, all right. right? First of all, we're gonna get ethics reform anyway, even before, the trial's not gonna be until next summer, we're gonna have ethics reform within the next 30 days. So the trial's got nothing to do with ethics reform. That, Second, and the, and the Republicans se secondly, will support secondly, McAuliffe's the, plan the, the General Assembly reform. and Governor McAuliffe will likely sign into law ethics reform, but it's gonna be Virginia ethics reform. The feds have come in with this obscure Hobbs Act, their federal charges, not Virginia state charges. Right. They it's can't an press. apple they and, can't do, an they apple do and an orange, charges. Mark. It's an apple We and should an also orange. have federal charges for this kind of thing. Absolutely. Uh, I am proud, though, of my new Virginia leadership. I'm proud of McAuliffe for ethics reform. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, real proud I'm, of him. I'm yeah. proud of the Virginia Senate. By the way, uh, uh, the, the recount was, was won today, and it looks like we are going to have a Democratic Senate in Virginia. Uh, the General Assembly will be the only place that's still controlled by your party uh, due to gerrymandering and so forth. And the new Attorney General, Mark Herring, has announced that he's going to follow the Constitution of the United States, which, as you know, trumps the Virginia Constitution, and equal protection under the law, the 14th Amendment. He is going to join the plaintiffs fighting the, um, the well, the prohibition against gay people marrying in Virginia. He's going to fight that. Good for him. That's what they did in California. They'll still have two county clerks, so they're fully represented, so the issue will go before the courts. But the Attorney General is saying on the right side of history, unlike in Loving v. Virginia, when Virginia was on the wrong side of history in the interracial marriage case. All right, let's talk about your unethical governor first, all right? <laughs> Uh, you've got a guy named Boyd Marcus, who's sort of a shadowy political operative on the Republican side. He goes to the Cuccinelli campaign and says, for 40000 a month, you know, I can help you, you guys you out. You just try to politically I, smear him. For $40,000 a month, I can help you guys out. The emails are, have been released. We've all seen them. Uh, the Cuccinelli campaign turns him down. He goes to the Malton Califf campaign and says, for 10000 a month, I can help you. They hire him for $10,000 a month. And what's the payback? They give him $122,000 a year job running the ABC, which he has no qualifications for. He's, right, he's right about for. marriage equality. So you're paying he's somebody absolutely right about marriage equality. And you know it. For and that's how they won it in California. It doesn't Thank get any God more sleazy. Thank God for Attorney General Mark Herring of Virginia. Thanks for coming on this. Mark Herring, Red Herring's going to resign for abandoning that his post. That is crazy. That's, He's going to resign. That's just crazy. Talk.